Miami. Hello, please can we hear me? Okay, so I'm just waiting for an indication that can I have him on. Can I go on? Um, there are no signs or indications that I'm um, audible enough. Michael. Okay, so I'm um, not quite sure if Okay, uh good afternoon everyone. Um thank you all for making our time to be here. And for those of us that have been here since the beginning, thank you for staying um, this long. My name is Lute um, Aunduna, and I will be discussing with you the application of machine learning in education. Uh, so uh, briefly before I start, I'll just give um, a summary of myself. Um, I'm a data scientist at Octave Incorporations. Um, I've been at Octave since the very inception of Octave Incorporations. And uh, I've had the privilege to lead the data science team at Octave for about two years now. And um, I'm a mathematician by training. I um, study mathematics at now the graduate level. Uh, in terms of uh, machine learning, um, I am more interested in um, the research area of machine learning. Um, I'm interested in the creation of these algorithms and how they can uh, better improve our lives in the society. So, um, that is that about me, and um, I'll just go ahead to present my slides. So um, if you can see my slides, please um, just let me know. OK, um, so um, can we see my slides? Okay. So, um, like I said, I will be discussing with us the application of um, machine learning in education. Uh, before I continue, I'd really um, love to um, appreciate the efforts of Dr. Victor and um, Professor Jordan and um, other cool speakers as well who already gave an overview of what machine learning is. Um, I think they reduced the burden on me, and so um, I'll just build up on what they said. But for the sake of those that are just joining or those that maybe got distracted during um, their presentations, I'll just give um, a rough overview of what machine learning is, right? So machine learning is the ability to make computers learn from information so that they can make decisions in the future without being explicitly instructed, mm -hmm. right? So we are basically training these computers so that even in our absence, they are able to make, um, they're able to make uh, predictions, they're able to give us results. And just as our first speaker said, um, fortune, he said, 
um, there's a key word when you talk about machine learning, and that is automation. I also like to add to the fact that, um, in addition to automation, um, another key word that is um, important in machine learning is, um, as the name implies, machine learning. It is learning. So two key words that are important in machine learning are learning and automation, right? And uh, machine learning is a subset of um, the top field of artificial intelligence. And uh, we know artificial intelligence is here to stay. Uh, machine learning basically falls into three different categories. We have the supervised learning, the unsupervised learning, and the reinforcement learning, right? Um, I'll just give a brief summary of what these are because I believe um, speakers before me already um, spoke about this. So supervised learning is basically just a form where we are feeding our algorithm with labels. So it's left for the algorithms to be able to match um, the results we want and the input that we are given it. And then from supervised learning, um, it's basically feeding the algorithm without labels. Hello, can we hear me? Yeah, oh, we can. Can, can you on. can you um, be sure you are presenting your slides? Because we can't see your slides. Please uh, present with the stream here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I don't. Yes, but I do not. Uh, okay, so is it visible now? Uh, please give me a confirmation that my slides are visible. Yes, thank you very much, Lute. Okay, all right, uh, sorry about that. So, um I was basically giving us an overview of what machine learning is, and um, I gave us um, the three different categories for which machine learning can be divided into, uh, which are Sorry, Lute, can you hear me? Learning. Hello, Yes, Lute. I can hear you. Yes, I can hear you. You're, you're sharing your like screen, but you can't see your slide. Okay, so I basically. Let me let me work on that. Give me a second. Um, uh, why is working? Why is this way? Um, Um, so, sorry, I'm trying to fix that on my own end. Um, is my slide visible now? I don't yeah, Lita, you can just uh, show your video and continue, so we don't waste much time. Okay. I think I'll just go ahead because of the timing. Okay, so yes, um, sorry about that. Um, I was discussing about um, the different um, categories of machine learning, um, supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement learning. And I said supervised learning is where we feed our algorithms with labels. Unsupervised learning is we feed in our algorithms without labels and just allowing 
uh, algorithms to um, understand the underlying pattern within this data. And then reinforcement learning um, is a process where we have an agent in an environment and we reward this agent for every um, right activity that it does. Um, so you can you can use a real life example of uh, maybe a dog when you throw something and you ask the dog to fetch right each time it brings well, whatever it fetched you are giving it a reward so that is basically the concept behind reinforcement learning right and um like i said i'll be discussing with us the application of uh, machine learning in education right and so um the first use case i'm going to be talking about is what we refer to as a personalized learning. So um, Professor Abiodun threw some light to this at the beginning, so I'm just going to elaborate more on it. So personalized learning is a form of education in which machine learning can be used to tailor instructions to the individual's needs and interests of each student. Right, so um, what is this basically saying? Personalized learning is a form where based on previous data, we can actually understand the different um, ways by which learners can be approached. It helps us to understand the different learning approach for students, and this can better help to improve their, their performances, right? And um, pers uh, personalized learning um, can be applied in three different areas. Uh, might be more areas, but I choose three use cases, uh, which are um, recommendation systems. And um, recommendation systems, as we know, are being used by almost um, the big companies, uh, but particularly are more focused on recommendation systems in, um, in the EdTech space. Uh, since we are an EdTech company, I will be using examples from the EdTech space. And um, if you look at the likes of Udemy, Udacity, Coursera, they have recommendation systems embedded in their, in their websites, right? Um, they use this system to actually understand um, what contents users are interested in learning and they try to tailor their suggestions towards what these um, users are actually um, going through on their platform. And this is a, a good use case of a personalized learning, um, which is a recommendation system. Another use case of a personalized learning is in what we refer to as adaptive testing. So adaptive testing is more like a scenario where you're taking on exams, and after some time, the questions that um, are being offered to you are dependent on your performance on the previous questions that you've answered, right? So um, if you're taking an exam that has up to like 20 questions, possibly from your sixth, seventh question upward, um, the kind of questions you are going to be getting are going to be dependent on um, how you performed in the first five questions that you answered. And a very good you know, use case of this is in um, the GRE exam, that is the graduate record exams and the GMAT exams. Um, these two exams work on the principle um, known as the item response theory, which is basically trying to understand what, um, how you have performed uh, based on the previous questions and then see how they can tailor questions to your level of understanding. So this is also another use case of uh, personalized learning. Another use case of personalized learning is um, in what we refer to as content creation, but for this time, um, educational purposes. So with personalized learning, as an instructor, as a teacher, um, you are able to understand the kind of approaches that you can implement on your students, right? And um, once you know how to do that, you are able to create curriculum, you are able to create content based on the needs of each of the students. And while that could be um, quite, um, it could be um, such a work, um, unsupervised learning is what we refer to as segmentation, which where you just clustering algorithms. And the issue of education, right? You can actually apply this um, segmentation to your students, and then from there you can tailor the the content for which each of the students are going to digest. So basically, this is just um, what personalized learning is all about. Um, another use case of uh, machine learning in education is what we refer to as automated grading. So um, this is basically the process where we want machines, we have machines to um, automatically grade um, exams, grade papers, 
more like um, giving us results. And um, this, is, this is particularly um, interesting because it helps teachers, it helps instructors focus on more productive aspects of their tasks, right? Um, because, I mean, you could, you could have um, a whole lot of students in your class and um, when it comes to grading, it might be really, really cool, so it might really take um, a huge amount of time. And so uh, machine learning comes into this area to help us actually ease the tax of the instructors. Now, automated grading basically has um, two, advantage, um, two advantages. One is the fact that it allows teachers, it allows instructors to focus on more productive aspects of their works, right? So these systems are actually are basically doing some sort of administrative task, right? And then another advantage of um, automated grading is that um, it prevents the occurrence of bias when grading papers. Um, so let me break that down so that we can understand. Now, um, as humans, we operate sometimes based on feelings, but uh, machines do not have the same feelings as, as, as we do. So what happens is you as an instructor, you as a teacher, you could be grading a particular script, a particular essay, and you might actually know this particular student in your class that is very, very, very bright. And for one reason or the other, maybe in that particular um, course, a particular subject for which you are grading the student, the student is not really performing well, right? He's really not giving what is uh, meant to be of standard. But due to the fact that you know already that this student is a bright student, this student on a normal day is equal to this task, this student is meant to be an A student in this course you introduce some sort of biasness in grading the script. You overlook some silly mistakes and some silly errors that the student will make. Now, when machine learning comes in, machine learning doesn't, there's no possibility of introducing that sort of bias into the, into the, into the, the grading of the, the work or the paper or whatever it is, because um, it's that way, because it has been given instructions, right? And giving this instruction, um, the instructor is not yet to tell the machine learning algorithm how to grade it. It has given the instructions, and its work now is just to grade papers as long as it is being fed. And then these are these are actually being implemented um, already. If you go online, um, if you search for automatic grading systems, you're going to see a whole lot of them. Um, um, an example an example of an automatic grading system is um, the copy list AI grading tool. So basically what this does is it helps to grade essays. So um, the, the lengthy time that you, um, the teacher can actually use in trying to understand what um, the student has written in an essay, um, this system can actually cover up for that and provide more time for this teacher to like focus on a more productive task. Uh, moving forward, another use case of machine learning in education is what we refer to as predictive analytics. So what is predictive analytics? Predictive analytics simply means using previous information to predict what is going to happen in the future. And uh, predictive analytics is actually implemented in um, almost every sector, every sector that we have, predictive analysis is implemented. So how is predictive analytics implemented in the education sector. In the education sector, we can use previous data, previous information that we have gotten from students to understand the student's performance, right? So we can understand students' performance. In understanding their performance, we can also understand key areas that these instructors can actually focus on in order to better improve student performance. Another good um, use case of um, predictive analytics is in predicting possible careers for students. Um, I remember why um, while most of us were still in high school, um, majority of us um, had possible career or something we wanted to chase. For some of us, we were always we were going to study medicine, we we're going to be doctors and all. But at some point, imagine you want to study medicine, but you are not a fan of biology, you are not a fan of chemistry, right? This is where predictive analytics comes into play. So based on the performance, of previous students and the possible career options that um, they chose, the possible career paths that they followed through. Machine learning can help us 
give predictions on the current students that we have, right? So in this case, it, give us, it gives us possible options for which students can actually pick a career. And then we, as instructors or um, educational bodies, they come into play by trying to provide mentorship and guidance, right? Because obviously machine learning algorithms are not always going to be correct, right? So there might be some cases where um, it might make wrong predictions, but the good thing is it is giving us an insight to what um, a child can actually um, follow through while um, when he or she grows up. And that is the essence of uh, predictive analytics. Uh, moving forward, um, the last use case that I have for which machine learning is being applied in education is in um, speech translation, right? And um, this is where we have translators used in the classrooms so as to overcome the language barrier. So um, in this particular way, we can have people from uh, people with different backgrounds having different um, languages be in a particular learning environment and learn at the same time. Because what the translators do is they translate whatever it is that is being conveyed to them, they translate it, they translate these um, contents into their own native language. And it makes it easier for them to like um, overcome the issue of um, understanding what is being taught. And a good, um, one of the good reasons why I, I love the idea of translation, of speech translation, um, is because of the fact that it promotes diversity. I mean, diversity is very important, especially diversity in learning, diversity in education. So um, examples of, an example of, um, of a translator, of this translator um, is the Google Translator, right? Um, I'm sure most of us have heard about the Google Translator. So um, in most cases, you can just go to Play Store, possibly get the application and use, you can actually use it online. So um, there are numerous use cases for machine learning um, in education, but um, due to the limited time that I have, I think I will end my presentation here. So thank you for listening, and um, if there are any questions, I'm open to take them. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Lute. Really uh, enjoyed your statement, and uh, we now know how to apply your machine learning intelligence in the educational space. Yeah, sorry for for the time being passed, but you know, uh, lots of uh, things that we didn't plan for Kimo. So, um, for our next speaker, thank you, Lute. We appreciate your time. For our next speaker, we'll be having uh, Mr. Thank you for from Godina. And we'll be, now that we all know what specialist means and how to apply to different industries, now we want to know how to apply it in general.